Hello everybody, I'm Marco D'Ambros and today we're going to see how to do a bulge system in Bifrost with a matrix. When we talk about bulge system or collision system in Maya, we usually uh, see the system based on a raycast. Uh, raycast, what does it mean to use a raycast? So raycast, you have a mesh, you have your target mesh, you have your target mesh, you have a reference point, and what the system does is uh, cast array for every single vertex of your mesh and check with every single mesh of your target mesh. Almost, it's not properly like this, I just simplify. Uh, this means the system does two for loop, one for your, uh, for your mesh and the one for your target mesh. And like you see, there is, it's a very big computation. Even so, there's like some optimization process, let's say Raycast yeah, in Bifrost, for example, there is this accelerator node that helps you to reduce this, this sort of computation. It's still a double for loop for every single vertex of your mesh and uh, your target mesh. When you do your approach with the matrix, you're going to reduce this computation on just one, one for loop, the one of your target mesh. Because what you, the system is based on is check if all these, um, all these target vertex are inside your um, imaginary sphere or radius one. So the computation will be just one for loop instead of two. I'm going to do a proper video with the theory just to simplify all this uh, video here. So if you want to uh, go deep on understanding what are the steps and the logic behind, you can find the video uh, there. So, um, and this is like, is the system. You can say like we have a collision with this imaginary sphere. This actually is, is a matrix. So if you see, I'm changing like location, like locator, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, this video will be split in two parts. The first is the collision actually part. So we are going to get the matrix, get the matrix, get the collision point, find the collision point and push the mesh to have the collision mesh. At the second part, we're going to create a fake bulge system of a fake volume preservation. So we are going to check uh, based on radius an area next to the collision one. We're going to push the vertex up to create this sort of like volume preservation based on how much we push the geometry down. So let's start with the example. So let's go to create our geometry. Let's create a plane, for example, and our matrix. I'm going to create a locator just because it's easy to select, but every transform or every locator is fine for the, for the uh, example. Um, so one of the things that we are going to touch in this tutorial is about the uh, homogeneous coordinate or the projective coordinate. Um, there are in uh, 3D or anyway, in Maya, with even open Maya, there is difference between a vector and a point um, and uh, the number of element between three and four, etc. etc. So please, if you are interested about the argument or the topic, you're going to search on homogeneous coordinate on Google and you will find a lot of resources about it. Uh, they can go more on deep. But you're going to see a uh, swap between uh, the three and four vector uh, for this reason on uh, this tutorial. So, okay, we have our geometry, we have our target mesh, we have our matri matrix. So we are going to create our graphs like we did in, in the previous video on the plane shape. Uh, we are going to connect input output of mesh. So now we have our um, Bifrost mesh, so we can hide our uh, Maya one. So this actually is, you know, Bifrost node. We are going to, uh, let's create first the input matrix. So let's create an inverse matrix because it's what we are looking for. Let's connect. In matrix, and uh, let's connect. Um, our locator to our input matrix. So what matrix in matrix. Cool. So what we usually do when we create a deformer, we're going to set and get position of the vertex. So let's get point position. And let's set set point position. So this process, we actually do nothing. We just like get all the point position uh, properties and we set back on uh, our mesh. 
So nothing happened. Let's do the same things with the with the with the vertices. So we are going to multiply for inverse and we multiply it back on our matrix. So we are not going to change any position at all. We just to add uh, the steps that we, we want to modify in the future. So let's create a multi matrix. So this we're going to be inverse for our point. So actually this is a mistake and I can show you and that is one of the things that I mentioned before about the float tree. So this is a vector and actually go out as a float four because it's a point. Uh, let's go to connect this one here. And so even if you don't see this one as an error, so the system works. Uh, the reason why it works, because you can multiply with a vector tree with your matrix. It's just you don't have the result you, you want in this case, because you're going to, let's say, cut all the translations so the position of your vertices. You just keep like the rotation vector in this case, rotation matrix. So when we connect instead, we have an error and this is because we are trying to set a four point vector to a three. So let's transform now this one on vector four to vector three. Like I say, nothing actually happened. And the reason is we are not doing anything here. So let's transform this vector three to vector four. And now our W is to be one. So the difference is, uh, I try to simplify the argument, but if this W is zero, so there is no projection that is um, is a vector. So vector doesn't have a position in space, it's just a direction and magnitude. Instead, if it's one, there is a projection and that has become our point position, let's say. Um, so uh, you probably didn't notice because I was speaking up. So like, as soon as we put this one as one and the position is compute, we have a push. So now we are pushing because this is just in back. Our, um, our vertex, the opposite position of our transform our matrix. So like I said before, we are removing, we are computing like uh, this is our like local vertices. Let's compute back on. So let's multiply the result of this vertex with our matrices. So not the inverse, now the original one. And we compute, we connect back. So now we it's kind of like doing plus one minus one, let's say. So we are remove our matrix and add back here. So nothing really happened with this process. But this is our base for all new future computations. So all this block here is our compound, and this compound we can call it vertex. Uh, Okie dokie. So now we have, we are doing some step here. So what we want to do now, uh, so this is our compute back. Uh, this fine. So what we want to do, we want to normalize our vector. Like I say, because this vector is based on four, we need to transform on vector three or the normalization and we're going to have a, oh, a different value. That is not the one we are looking for. So this normalize actually, uh, actually we want normalize and we want to have the length. So this is the length, the name, not actually, actually length is fine. And we want to have the normalize, here. Um, let's do this one just for fun. Like I say, so if you see, this is um, this is sort of projection. Actually, this is the wrong projection. Just to be fair, and the reason why because if we are trying to multiply a, a vector three because we convert here to a, uh, a matrix. So we want to transform back from vector three to vector four, W will be one. And now this is actually is a projection. So this is a projection of our uh, plan to our matrix. So let's create a sphere, just to have like a visual representation of the imaginary sphere that I talked about previously. 
So this is, uh, is a sphere radius one. I can move this in here. Okay, so this is a sphere of radius one. If you see, we is like a projection of our mesh. If I move it, nothing's moving here. But if I move my our my geometry here, you are going to see move there. I hope you can notice it. And this actually, it's literally a projection. Like I say, if I move it here, I literally projecting this sphere, this plan on our sphere. So now we have our projection, uh, we have our length, this would be our condition. So let's say, let's check when we want to uh, collide or not. Um, let's do a, a visual debugging as well. So we have the length. So let's create a volume. This value would be hours radius one. We're going to substitute it as an input. Actually, let's do it immediately as an input. So let's go input. This would be our radius. Uh, this would be our offset. We don't need here what we're going to use in the next tutorial. Input at uh, the next part of the tutorial and offset. So we have our input zero offset well, whatever we're not going to use anyway. Uh, I think I made a mistake on the type. Let's double check. Oh no, I just okay. These are both floats. Perfect. So let's create a uh, a condition. So less when our the length of our vertex are less than our radius. This means there is a collision. So. Uh, visual debug. Okay, let's let's debug. So uh, let's remove just one second this one just for the time being. Okay. So um, to debug, we can use the, for example, the construct point. Construct point. Uh, and and um, visualize this point. So Construct point, we want to have scope point, point scope, sorry. Let's connect. Um, but we need to give them some points. And to do so, we are going to use find all in array. So find all array, we are going to pass this condition. This is an array of condition. We want to have the value true. So when these vertex are less, and we have, so now we have here an array then represent every value then where the less is minus than our radius. Let's go for from, get from array, get from array. And the array are our vertex point. I can do it. It's not difficult, it's just me don't have a right, a nice aim. We connect here. We are not seeing anything because the system needs to output something. So you can connect technically this one to the output. Let's do it, but it's not the way that we want to go. So you can do this one. That is fine. Uh, let's do sphere, color. I don't know, red is fine. Okay. Um, so actually, I show you. So this is that are our vertex we are going. We have a collision. If you see, like everything, every vertex that they collide with is going to be red now. And if nothing is collide, nothing is here. Um, I say we can use the output, but it's not the nice way to do it. We can create. We can use a node called terminal. And that is the best node for uh, this sort of um, visualization. So we can even let's see here. We can create a compound now. Like you see, this compound is still have the visibility switch. So let's go light. Oh, cool. And we have the collision as well. So let's go in different shapes as well. Awesome. Uh, this one here allows you to um, turn on and off the uh, visibilization. So for example, if I turn off this one, this is a diagnostic. We don't see the diagnostic anymore. 
um, the same way is going to happen if you, for example, work for the proxy. So now it's going to be the proxy. So you see, uh, for me, this one is the dynastic, it's not a pro proxy, so I just put there. Cool. Let's come back on a normal situation. So now we, fi we find a rules to define which vertex they need to collide. So we just need to push this vertex. And to do so, it's pretty easy. It's just a if condition. So let's say if condition, if is true, we are going to use Uh, actually, I would call vertex so vertex norm. We are going to, if it, the condition is true, then we want to have the normalized vertex. If it's not, we want to have a normal vertex. And now we can connect here. Let's remove the debug. And here you go. And we have a collision. Like I say, it's based on uh, radius, so you can reduce and increase the radius here. Uh, of course, um, we can check these things later. If you want to increase, decrease the radius, you want to um, multiply uh, the normal of, uh, well, we can do a very simple test here. So these, so for example, if we multiply, Here. Uh, actually, I don't like here. Let's create another input. Apply. So we want to multiply this one with this one. Example, so we multiply this one here, we can go there. It's fine because the radius now is zero, then it's bad. Here you go. So now, if we are going to increase or decrease the radius, So that is the first uh, is the first um, part we're going to define the, uh, the collision. In the second part, we're going to create a volume preservation. Thank you very much to follow this video. Uh, catch you later.